Hello and welcome back to Oncology for Medical Students and this section of video is on the molecular basis of cancer. This video is on clonal selection. I want to start by introducing a conundrum. We've said that in order to become cancerous, cells need to gain mutations that give them particular properties. These are outlined in the hallmarks of cancer. The mutations occur in tumour suppressor genes or proto-oncogenes. It's thought that cells need to gain between four and seven specific mutations in the tumor suppressors or proto-oncogenes in order to become cancerous. At a normal rate of mutation, the chances of a cell randomly gaining all of these specific mutations is very low indeed. It appears that cancer is statistically impossible. So why does cancer occur so commonly? There are a number of theories, but one of the most prominent is that of clonal selection. Cancers are clones. They develop from mutations in single cells. These cells pass on their mutations to their offspring. But because of their fast rate of mutation, the clone offspring of the cells develop their own new mutations. This means that within these tumors, there is a lot of genetic diversity. The mutations are random, but because every cell is competing uh, with each other for space and resources, those that gain mutations that enable them to divide faster, like this green cell here, gives them an advantage. You might have noticed that this is very similar to the theory of natural selection. Each successive generation of cells carries the previous cancerous mutations and has the potential to gain more. Eventually they outcompete the older generations of cells. Here we can see the purple cells have gained mutations which make them divide even faster than the previous generation. One of the best examples of how this works in practice is colon cancer. Here we can see the abdominal organs with the colon there in blue. The colon is essentially a tube where, and where cancers form is usually the epithelium which is the innermost layer that lines the tube here again in blue. The initial mutations allow some cells in the colon to start dividing at a higher rate than cells around it. They eventually grow outwards and form something called an adenoma. An adenoma is a benign tumour of glandular tissue. The adenomas in the colon usually grow inwards towards the centre of the, the tube and form tumours called polyps. At this stage, the tumours are still benign but as cells within the polyp gain further mutations and outcompete their surrounding cells, they eventually gain mutations that allow it to grow outward into the tissues of the colon. This is the point at which it's considered cancerous. If we look at the cells at each successive stage in this sequence, we can see that at each successive stage they've gained more specific mutations. The first gene to be mutated in this sequence is often the APC gene. APC is a tumour suppressor gene and when it fails to function, cells are able to divide without the same level of control. Somewhere along the line we see that the COX-2 oncogene becomes active. encouraging the growth of the adenoma. When the KRAS tumour suppressor gene fails, then the adenoma grows larger and eventually, with the loss of P53 and 18Q, the tumours become cancerous. These aren't the only genes that are involved in every instance of uh, colon cancer, but they're very often implicated.
So in the previous videos, we talked about the idea of tumour suppressor genes and the two HIT hypothesis. In the case of colorectal cancer, there's another example that supports the idea. In rare cases, people inherit a faulty copy of the APC gene from one of their parents. This faulty copy is therefore in every cell of the body, including the colon. This mutation is, the ex is an example of the, of the first HIT. It only requires a further hit before the tumour suppressor fails and the cells begin to form adenomas. And this is what happens. Patients with an APC mutation develop something known as familial adenomatous polyposis coli, whereby they develop vast numbers of adenomas in their colon, all of which are one mutation closer to developing into cancers. People with FAP are almost certain to develop colorectal cancer during their lifetime, and on average by the age of 39. Usually it's treated by surgical removal of the whole, whole colon. So in conclusion, tumors are genetically diverse. Selection pressures favor the cells that compete for space and resources. Successive generations of clones carry the same mutations as the previous, but they can mutate further to gain further advantages. And it's in this way that cancers are able to gain the sufficient number of mutations in order for them to become cancerous. Thanks for listening. See you again next time.